Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Well, welcome to our midweek communion. I'm here once again with Emily in St Thomas's on uh, Bibbury Lane. Uh, and once again, we're going to go through our, our Holy Communion together for you to do uh, at home, for you to engage with God at home. Uh, if you haven't already, you can download or read on the screen uh, the service from our website. The details for that are on the screen now. And uh, other than that, we will just engage with God wherever we are. That's one of the wonderful things about God's Spirit is it doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter what time we do this, He is with us. But just a few pieces of news before we continue. Uh, most of which, of course, is on your new sheet, which you probably get by email. And if you don't, do get in contact with me and I will make sure that you can be added to that. Uh, just to say that uh, next week is Ash Wednesday. Um, and we're going to try, Emily and I are going to try and figure out how we might do Ash Wednesday with Ash in together. Um, and so why don't you somehow prepare uh, some ashes for yourself if you're joining us next week. This will be a bit of fun, won't it? Uh, you might, uh, if you have last year's uh, Palm Cross, you might decide to, uh, to burn that safely, of course, um, and collect together the ashes with a little bit of uh, olive oil or, uh, just to mix up for the service. Uh, if not, why don't you um, uh, make yourself a, a cross, perhaps out of paper, and just say a brief prayer to God over that, and maybe burn that, and again, mix it with a little bit of uh, olive oil before the service, so just so you've got a small little bit of paste of the ashes and we will work out, Emily and I will work out how we do that next week. You'll see that next week. Ash Wednesday. Um, and of course that means that we're into Lent after then uh, and the following Wednesday we begin our Discipleship Explored uh, Lent group. Uh, we're going to do one of those at 11am on the Wednesday and one at 7.30pm. Uh, if you uh, would love to join that, if your home group isn't doing the Discipleship Explored or you're not part of a home group and you want to do that, do get in touch with me. More details about that sort of thing and, and what's going on uh, on the uh, new sheet. And of course, finally, the, uh, the last thing that we are delighted to announce um, is that we, we are getting ready to move on with phase one of the renovation of St. Nicholas's for many, many years. I've heard 20 years, I've heard 30 years. We have wanted to renovate St. Nicholas's. Well, we're starting that soon with the renovation of the toilets, making that fit for purpose in the 21st century. You, you haven't got one of these already uh, through your door from us, uh, you can either come to St Thomas's during the week and pick one up uh, between 9am and 4pm when this building is open for private prayer, or you can go to the website and find out more about how you can be part of the renovation of St Thomas, uh, St Nicholas's. We, uh, we want St Nicholas's to be as fresh and as welcoming as St Thomas's is. It'd be great if you could partner with us. My, there's a lot of notices, aren't there, for a Wednesday communion. So uh, let's take a moment to be quiet before we begin our service and just to commune with our God. Let's take a moment of silence for that. So we say our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, 
cleanse the faults of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. We pause for a moment as we reflect on our lives and come before a God who is keen to forgive us. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all as we confess together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen in us all goodness. And keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we come to our Gloria. The last time we're going to have to say, or we have the opportunity to say our Gloria for a little while, so let's enjoy this worship together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now we come to the prayer of the week, the collect, uh, where we say thank you to God. But before we do that, a moment for you to say your own prayer of thanks to God. Almighty God, you have created the heaven and the earth and made us in your own image. Teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and forever. Amen. Now Emily is going to bring us our first reading. This reading is taken from James, chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. James, 
a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve disciples of dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. In any of you is lacking wisdom, ask God, who gives all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter, being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let the believer who is lowly boast in his being raised up, and the rich in being brought low, because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field. Its flowers fall and its beauty perishes. It is the same with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation. Such as one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. No one, when tempted, should say, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Ellie. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And I'll be reading from Matthew 11, 1 to 15. After Jesus had finished instructing his twelve disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in the towns of Galilee. When John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his own disciples to ask him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you, have, what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. As John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind. If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes. No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there is not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raided. it. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. If you are willing to accept it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Whoever as he is, let him then here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We are, of course, uh, in the middle of looking at uh, the book of Matthew, the Gospel, the biography of Jesus, 
called Matthew. And uh, we've been slowly working our way through that. And in a little while, we'll take a break and we'll come back to it again further down the road. Uh, and then we reach this point this week where we see John the Baptist doubt. Now, I'm not going to spend too long on this because uh, Polly did a fantastic sermon on what we do when we doubt God at the weekend. And you can get that on the website. That'll be on the screen for you now. But it's just, I just want to say, here we are, John the Baptist, the man who said, Jesus says there has been no one greater before him. And yet John, who is also the cousin of Jesus, who has known him since he was a, a child, has doubts just before he's about to die. It brings me great comfort when I have those times of trial in my life, uh, when I have doubts, to know that it's not surprising for us who are humans to have doubts. But we have God, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have the Bible to help us through those times. And uh, as I say, do check out the uh, sermon that uh, Polly uh, put out over the weekend, a fantastic approach to how we deal with our doubts with scripture moving forward. So for now though, we uh, come back to our service and the creed as we reach the part of our service where we, where we share with others what we believe. So we're gonna say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now Emily is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. today that we might try something a little bit different. This is a, a, a technique that I learned from one of our neighbouring parish priests in Denmead. And it is uh, using our hands, or particularly our fingers, um, to help us focus on our prayer. Um, I'd like to encourage you to have your hands out in front of you. You might want to just look at them or follow me as I just hold each finger as we move through our prayers. So our first, our first finger is our thumb. Our thumb is the strongest finger on our hand, but it is also the finger closest to our heart. And so for this one, we just remember those who are close to us, close to our hearts, our families and our friends, but also the things that are strong and that sustain us throughout our life. So our next finger is our, uh, our pointer finger, and so for this one we pray for those who guide us and point us in society, whether that's um, our doctors and nurses, our first responders, our therapists, all those, all those people that help to guide us through our lives. We just hold them before God today. we move on to our middle finger. Our middle finger is the tallest finger on our hand and so we bring to God the leaders of our nation and our world, those who are leading us through the pandemic at the moment, our church leaders and, and all those that, that help and guide us. We pray that God will give them wisdom and, and guidance to help. And 
so we move on to our fourth finger, our ring finger. This is the weakest finger on our hand, and so we remember those who are, are ill or sick, those who are on their last journeys on this earth, and those who have already passed, the families that mourn them, and those who are just weak and pushed out of society. And lastly, we come to our little finger. Um, this is the smallest finger on our hand, and so we remember ourselves. We ask God to help us with those things that perhaps the only things we would bring to God, to be thankful for the small things that we have. I'm thankful today that there is a glimmer of sunshine. you to, uh, to hold your hands out as a, an offering of those prayers to God. Just lift those, lift those prayers to him. And I suggest we just end our intercessions with the traditional merciful Father. Accept these, these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, son our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Thank you, Emily, for that. A different way of praying. And of course, we can do that at home at any point. Always helpful to have those reminders. And as we come to the part in our service where we would normally share the peace together, I ask you to bring to mind those that you would worship with normally and perhaps those that you haven't spoken with. Maybe bring to mind and allow the Spirit to nudge you about people you haven't seen for a while as we share the peace. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And as I prepare the communion table, enjoy this moment of hearing a hymn to worship God.
And so we come to the table to do what Jesus told us, indeed commanded us to do, to remember him. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms on the cross for us. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same way that he was betrayed, took bread and gave it to He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which was given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, call into mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, will honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, 
grant us peace. And so friends, draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Receive this spiritual communion in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compelled us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sin. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. I receive the body of Christ for all of his people. Receive the blood of Christ shed for all of his people. And as you receive your spiritual communion with Christ, enjoy this moment of a hymn to share with him. as we come together we say thank you to our Lord for this communion. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to we whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds with the knowledge and the love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord, in the name of Christ.